welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another day in eyeshadow palette week where every single day for seven days on my channel we are posting eyeshadow palette content if you guys want to check out my eyeshadow playlist down below with all of the previous palette week content everything palette themed will be in that playlist so if you like to talk about eyeshadow palettes then check out that playlist. Also, if you missed any of the previous days for this week, make sure to check out those videos as well. But today I am doing a video that was inspired by my friend Heather. I will have her channel and her video linked down below. I'm gonna be talking to you guys about 13 eyeshadow palettes in my collection that I would declutter if I could get my money back. So there's some products throughout my makeup collection that I definitely keep around and try and make them work or whatever it might be because even if I were to like resell them, I would not get like the value in my head back that I would want. Um, but I have 13 palettes in my collection that if I could just trade for the value of the palette back, these are the palettes that I would choose. I was actually surprised. I expected as I looked through my makeup collection to have more of these, but I really could only come up with 13. So if you're interested in seeing which palettes those are, stay tuned. First, if you've yet to subscribe to my channel and you like project panning content, palette themed content, or you just like to chit chat about makeup, I would love if you'd consider subscribing before moving on. And other than that, let's jump into the video. All right, if you guys hear like squeaking or like rumbling in the background, currently doing laundry, this is the second time I'm filming this video. I'm not sure what happened to the footage the first time I filmed it. So we're refilming. I'm also testing out a new eyeshadow palette today. It's the ColourPop Tinkerbell palette and I do not love the way that the mattes blend in that palette. So I do not like my eyeshadow, but I don't have time to take it off and redo it. So it is what it is today and we're just rolling with it. Okay, I think maybe, oh shoot. Like I extra don't know what's going on with my hair today. Do we ever know what's going on with hair? How cute are these earrings though? They're little, um, Skeletons. I got them at Target. I'll see if I can link them for you guys. I think they're so cute. Um, okay, let's go in order of like least expensive to like most expensive. So honestly, like didn't pay a lot for these two palettes, but still, if I could trade them for my money back, I would. First, I have the Cloud Spun palette from ColourPop. This is a palette in my collection that's broken. Um, it is obviously a pink palette. And when I purchased this at the beginning of the year, I was really, really into like mauve pink toned palettes. And I thought that this would be a really fun addition to my collection. But what I've since realized about my love for pink eyeshadow is I love a good pink shimmer, foil, metallic, duochrome. Love that for myself. But when it comes to like pink mattes, they're just not for me, especially when they're this vibrant. Like I can do like a mauve dusty pink. I love me a good dusty pink. But when it comes to like brights like this, they're just not really my jam. I'm not super comfortable with them. I don't really love the way my eyeshadow looks whenever I use them. So I really only like this palette for like these two shades. And even so, they're just okay in my opinion. And I have other fun pink metallic shades from singles in my collection um like single eyeshadows that i just prefer over this so if i could trade this for my buddy back absolutely wouldn't even think about it it would be a yes and then also the ColourPop malibu barbie palette this i just i don't know if i if it was the color story i was drawn to that made me do the double take or if it was just like the nostalgia of a barbie palette but for some reason i could not get this palette out of my mind and even when i looked at the color story before purchasing i was like girlfriend you literally do not need that eyeshadow palette you have all of these shades with the exception of maybe i don't have this shade which i know i would never use maybe i don't have that shade in my collection but everything else i have but still had to purchase the palette i remember i was getting like caribou coffee one morning and i had talked myself out of this palette and I'm sitting in line waiting for my caribou and I think I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw someone reviewing the lip product from the Malibu Barbie collection and I was like, eh, I feel like this is a sign, like I just need to get the, mar the palette. And so I ordered this palette in the caribou coffee line and um, now I'm filled with uh, not caffeine but regret. <laughs> um, this has since been donated to my daughter Zoe's makeup salon, so it is going to good use. She loves this palette, she loves Barbies. So in terms of that, like I wouldn't trade it for my money back, but if I'm talking about like just me and just me alone, and like this wasn't a part of Zoe's salon, I definitely would just say, give me my money back. I will not miss this in my makeup collection. Next up, I have this one from Juvia's Place. 
Uh, this, I, this is like twofold. One, I would trade this for my money back because then I could just buy like the Magic Mini. This is the large Magic palette and I just do not love large eyeshadow palettes like this. So if I got my money back and I really wanted this color story, I could get my money back and then buy the Mini. Um, this is what the palette looks like. It's super beautiful, but I recently put this in my palettes on their last hoorah. That was one of my palette week videos. I believe that was the first one to go up. Check it out. Um, I've had so much fun with that series this year. It's essentially like a chopping block. Um, I love this palette in theory, but I just never reach for it. And then I like think to myself, like I should declutter this, but then I'm like, oh, but I love these shades. And I've tried to pop out shades from Juvia's Place palettes before and they're like, they don't stick to my magnetic palettes. Has, has anyone else tried that? And like, am I doing something wrong? Like I swear it's a metal pan that should just work. Um, I guess I could buy like my own magnet, but that just sounds like a hassle. Um, so I just, uh, like if I could get my, I, I don't, I wouldn't miss this in my collection. I don't feel like because I just reach for it so infrequently. And like, if this was out of my collection, then I just feel like I wouldn't think of like these fun, like beautiful shades down here. Like this shade is probably the reason I keep this palette around this shade as well as like this shade right here. But if I could trade this for my money back and then this wasn't even in my collection to even look at anymore, I feel like I wouldn't miss it. Next up, I have some Huda palettes. And if you guys are long time subscribers, you know I love Huda Beauty. I love her eyeshadow formula. I do think her eyeshadow formula is very hit and miss, specifically with foiled shades. Her mattes, I think, are always pretty decent with the exception of a few duds that I've tried from time to time. It's really like the lid toppers and the foiled sometimes that just do not work for me. But I still get super excited about every single palette release from Huda. Um, so I have four eyeshadow palettes from Huda to discuss. First up, I have two from the Haze collection. Up first, I have the Sand Haze palette. I was really excited about the entire Haze collection. I, again, was very into these tones that th the time that this palette released. So I was like all about this. I also love my Huda Medium palette from the Nude collection. And this reminded me of that Huda Medium palette. I'm obsessed with that palette. I think it's so good. It's something I actually had not reached for much this year and then it was in a project pan and now I like cannot stop reaching for that palette. Uh, but this mattes all perform really, really nicely. I've had way too much caffeine this morning. I'm drinking a Celsius Tropical Vibe, one of my favorite energy drinks, um, but I haven't eaten anything and I can like feel my hand shaking as I hold these palettes up. Does anyone else have that problem? Do you have like 300 milligrams of caffeine before eating or am I just like, is there something wrong with me? I mean, I know there's many things wrong with me. That is just definitely an opportunity of mine. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, um, another opportunity is clearly my mind is always in 10,000 places and I can't focus on the topic at hand that I'm talking about and always have to sidetrack off on the most random stories ever. Anyway, this palette. Mattes perform really nicely. Shimmers hit and miss. I was just really disappointed in the shimmers, specifically like the shimmers that I were most excited, I was most excited about. This one being one of them. It's just flaky. You have to apply it with your finger, which is never my favorite form of application. And I just don't feel like you get the impact that I was looking for. So this, I absolutely wouldn't even be a question. Give me my money and you got the palette. Even more so disappointing was the khaki palette because this was the palette that got me the most excited about this entire collection. I love greens and I was very into greens at this time as well. I'm still into greens, but I was like greens, all the greens at that time. There are five mattes in this palette and I think that the mattes perform pretty nicely. I would say like the two deeper shades take a little bit more work and a little bit more blending, which is a little bit of a hassle um, or a little bit annoying, but every single shimmer, whatever you want to call the foiled whatever is in this palette, are just flaky and icky and just like don't like it swatches nice but like also just doesn't feel nice to put my finger into oh this one right here which i was so excited about just like ugh. okay now i'm like putting this on i'm like maybe that would make a good topper shade you guys i was thinking i was going to declutter this in my upcoming palette declutter but now i'm like do i give this one last chance regardless if someone right now is like girlfriend if if you hand me that palette, I will give you your $29 back. I'd be like, here you go. 
but now I feel like I need to like get I'm gonna put this in my drawer back here and give this one last try and maybe I'll come back and put this in a video about products I changed my mind about but probably not because honestly what from what I remember those like all of the shimmers were just so disappointing lackluster you have to use a finger like literally trying to use a, a brush the brush won't even pick it up you have to use a finger. It's not like, uh, it looks best with a finger. It was like, no, you literally, like, you have to use your finger. So, that sucks. Um, and then also the Huda Chocolate Brown Palette. I almost bought every palette in the Huda Chocolate line, and I'm really glad that I decided to only go with one palette. This one is not bad quality by any means. Um, it just, again, with some of the shimmers, I just felt like they looked a lot more beautiful in the pan. I also feel like with all of Huda's eyeshadows, even her brown eyeshadows, for some reason, they always pull a little bit more like purpley mauve on me and not just like a straight up neutral or warm brown. Uh, and I had the same thing with this one. This is not something I would declutter by any means because I do think it is nice. It's something that would be easy for travel because it's easy to use. It's good quality. But I also have these tones and these shades many times over in my collection. So if someone asked me like for this palette in exchange for the money it cost, it would be an easy yes. I do have one more Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette to mention, but it is technically not next up in line of pricing. So we're going to come back to that one. And the next two, I'm going to talk about these together, are these two from Charlotte Tilbury. These are Charlotte Tilbury quads. I have the Pillow Talk Pops palette, so it's the all shimmer shades, and then I also have Exaggerize, which is really beautiful, and it's really not a quality thing with these. I think that they're nice palettes, and they're really convenient, really easy to use on days that I just want no fuss, don't have to think about it, just a quick, easy look. But for $53, I just cannot justify that price tag and don't really think that these are worth it. If the Fire Rose Quad were to come back, just probably because I got so much hype and I've seen so many beautiful looks with that. I would pay $53 for that, but I don't feel like these are worth $53. Um, the packaging is also really cheap. And even though, again, quads for me are really nice because it's just like, I don't even have to think about it. I just reach in, create a really quick, simple look and I'm done. If someone honestly offered me my money for these, it would be such an easy decision because if I exchanged both of these for my money back, that's $106 that I could then buy so many other eyeshadow palettes, makeup, just so many other things with. So these two would definitely not be a hard decision. Next up, I have a Pat McGrath quad to talk about. And honestly, I love most of my Pat McGrath quads. Um, not necessarily for reaching into just a quad to create a look. Usually with my Pat McGraths, I'm using them in combination with another eyeshadow palette. But the one that I would exchange for my money back is the Divine Rose Luxe Quad in Et Eternal Eden. This is the one that released around Valentine's Day. And when I look at this palette, I think it's beautiful. But this shade right here, I already know, is really not going to get much use out of me at all because it's one of those pink shades that I just do not like on my eyes, on my skin tone. I just don't enjoy that. Um, I do enjoy these three shades. I think this is a really beautiful matte mauve shade. And I think that these two are really beautiful shimmers. Specifically, this one I think is just gorgeous. But... For $65, I honestly have so many other mattes, mauve mattes in my collection that perform just as well that, I, you know, I can grab a whole mauve palette rather than just have the one mauve shade. I'm thinking of like the ColourPop Making Mauves or the Lawless Baby One palette. This shade right here is nothing special. You're not getting any of the Pat McGrath special shades in this. You're getting a beautiful, like, intense metallic shadow, but it's not that special sort of like multi-chrome type of thing. And then this is just like a shimmer, like a just basic shimmer that I could get in my collection. So I'm just thinking about all the other just beautiful um, indie brand shadows I could purchase with $65 back. Like I could purchase eight to 10 eyeshadow singles from JD Glow who makes amazing, beautiful, stunning, what I would consider special shades if I had my money back and did not have this palette. So there is a little regret in me for purchasing this one. And then I have my other Huda Beauty palette. This one I also believe retails for $65, but I did get this one on sale. It's the Huda Beauty Desert Dust palette. And this is a palette that I had thought about for over a year and a half before actually purchasing. 
as I started to grow my Huda Beauty collection, I wanted this palette more and more and more. And then I was starting to get that collector's mentality and felt like I really needed this eyeshadow palette. But this is just not a color story that I'm reaching for all that often anymore. And I was excited for some of the shimmer shades, which I think still are beautiful, but the quality of some of like this matte purple is terrible. I don't enjoy the pressed glitter. I'm not going to be reaching for these like rich red shades. And even like the shimmers, like Huda's formula has gotten so much better since this formula, in my opinion, because some of the shimmers or metallic shades just are not as like outstanding as the other Huda palettes that I currently have in my collection. So absolutely even if i only got like my half off that i paid for this palette that money back i definitely would trade that trade that trade this palette in for the money honey next up let me explain this one so this is my tom ford quad i have the shade 27 meteoric um met oh, eoric meteoric i don't know i don't know if this was a limited edition quad i can never find this specific quad to link so this retails for $88, which is just astronomical. The packaging is cheaper than I would like for paying $88. Like it'd be nicer if it felt heavier and not quite as like cheap and plasticky. I think that the formula is really nice. I think the shades are beautiful. Similar to the Charlotte Tilbury, like it's nice to just have this quad, easy to use, easy to reach into. But if I could get $88 back for this and exchange it, even just like exchange this for another Tom Ford quad in like a uh, neutral brown, I would have preferred that I got a neutral brown that I felt like I would get more use out of rather than this color story, which I feel like I'm not reaching for all that often. I picked the color story, I picked the palette, I get that, but there's a part of me that wishes for spending $88 on four eyeshadows. I had thought through my purchase a little bit more and decided to start my Tom Ford collection with a more neutral color story that I would reach for more often. So even though I think this is nice, even though I like this, I will not declutter this. If I could get my $88 back just to even purchase another Tom Ford quad that I feel like I would get more use out of, I would do that. Then I have one of the Pat McGrath big daddies that I would, I would definitely exchange for my 125 back. And it is the Divine Rose, the original one. I wanna say this is the number six. This is what this looks like. This isn't a bad palette. I like this palette just fine, but I don't think I like it for $125. And honestly, I did get this on sale. I wanna say I got this 30% off, thank goodness. Um, I love, if I could get just like this quad right here, like as a quad, I would buy that. I would pay $65 for that. But everything else I just don't think is that great. Like the mattes are fine, they perform nicely, but these, like this side of the palette just does not ex inspire me or excite me like some of my other Pat McGrath palettes, like the Bronze Seduction, I love. I would not trade that for my $125. I also have the Pat McGrath number three with that beautiful green shade. I love that palette, would not trade that. But this one just does not inspire me like some of my other Pat McGrath palettes. So honestly, or even if I could trade this for her newest palette that I think is so beautiful, I would do that. Like this one is just, it's just fine, you know? And then finally, the last palette I have to talk about is the <laughs> Natasha Denona Circle Local Palette. Um, I just should not have purchased this. I saw this release. I got super excited for it. So it was a new Natasha Denona palette just with just like bright colors, which was so fun. And then instantly I was like, but girlfriend, you're never going to reach for colors like this. Like you don't need that. And I like wrote it off, but then it was right around the Sephora VIB sale. This was included in the Sephora VIB sale. It was at Sephora at the time. And I was like, <clears throat> Yes, I am definitely playing with color this year, which I really have not. Fun fact, I feel like I played with color quite a bit last year. This year, it's been all neutrals. Um, but I convinced myself to purchase this $129 eyeshadow palette that I just don't think is that good. And even if it was great, like the best of the best Natasha formula, this is just not a color story I am reaching for. Like maybe I would reach into this for like a couple of the shades, but I'm just not gonna use this so this was a waste of money i am actually considering trying to resell this one because i'm like well, I, don't, I don't need this i'm not using this some of the mattes i don't think are great in this i really have struggled with creasing with the pink shades 
$129, I should not have the creasing that I had. It was really bad. It was like my eyeshadow had completely worn away in my crease and I used an eyeshadow base. It was just bad. It was bad. And honestly, it would just like, please, can I have my money back? And then you can have this palette, you know? All right, you guys, after that, those are the 13 eyeshadow palettes I would exchange for my money back if I had the opportunity. I would love to know what eyeshadow palettes do you currently have in your collection that you would give your that you would give back for your money back if you could. I'm really excited about the upcoming palette week videos, so stay tuned for those. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to watch today's video, for supporting my channel, for supporting palette week, just for supporting me as you guys always do. I love you guys so much, and I will catch you in tomorrow's palette video. Bye.